Okay, so here's the main editing window for Premiere Pro. There's a whole bunch of navigation here, and I just got confused figuring out what window does what. Plus, I would just forget as soon as I started to kind of learn it. So I'm going to teach you by actually doing. So I'm going to start a new project, and down here where it says Timeline, there's no sequences. I'm just going to go Apple N for a new sequence. You can also find it up in File, New Sequence but let's just call this one yoga okay so I don't care about any of these other things up here don't worry about that not important now there's a timeline here and it's called yoga this is in the projects alright just know this is a timeline now I'm gonna skip all the other explanation because we're just gonna start working what I've done is in this demo folder I've put in everything that I'm gonna need for this uh, project I put in a still, I put in some video clips, and I have a music file that's somewhere else that doesn't matter, but I'm going to bring it into the project. So, right here what you see is the media browser, and if you can't find that window, just go up to workspace and then go to one of these editing things. I chose editing CS 5.5, and this basically showed me this layout here, which is the standard layout. Now, I'm going to uh, app sh uh, Option click, command click this one, and go import. So now I have imported a photograph. And I'm going to go down here, and here's a video. So I'm going to just option click, import. Or you can go right click, I believe. And then if you're on a trackpad, just press two fingers to the bottom. Let's go right here, and then go import. So now inside my project, I've got some stuff. And this is the stuff I'm going to work with. Okay, so it's trying to find a bunch of stuff. Okay, so now let's go and drag this over here or just double click it. If I double click it, it pops into the source window. We'll call this the before or the staging window. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to just drag it into the timeline right here. Now, this is a still photograph, okay? So and then uh, right here you can kind of see ooh, it's cropped in just a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click somewhere right in here like this and I'm gonna right click or command click and I'm going to go scale to frame size boom now it's all inside got it okay now we're gonna do a video clip and I wanna find out what part of the video clip I need so again I'm gonna double click on this it'll put it into the staging window and this is nice I can go like this and just kinda of look across okay so we'll just kinda of pick one right there that's kinda of neat and then I'm gonna click once on the I button on my keyboard I for in I'm gonna press the space bar just a tiny bit and I'm gonna wait until everybody raises up just like that and then I'm going to do I think they raised their hands up or something like that um, okay so actually now uh, before the, right there I'm gonna go I and then that's enough and I'm gonna go O for out got it so what's happened here is that I've basically taken just a miniature clip of this entire big fat video I'm gonna pull it down here like that until it snaps so I'm holding the mouse down let go and it's going to snap into place. I can't really see what's going on in here. It's too small. So I'm going to hit the plus button uh, to make the window scale bigger. Or uh, right underneath the delete button, it's the backward slash button. Boom. This will give you uh, the entire length fit into your screening window. Okay, so that's that. Now let's go into this one here. Now, did you notice that it said private? Okay, it says private, and that's basically when you do an MTS file off of many cameras, like the Sony or whatever, anything that's not recording to an MOV file, which is typically your broadcast size files, it will be in MTS. So now we've got all of these different things. So I'm just going to pick one just out of random. And what's neat is if I scroll over, I can see. Now, right down here, watch, I'm going to make it larger so I can actually see better okay so now I can scroll down and I'm just gonna go back and forth here that's kinda neat I've got this kinda scene where the instructors kinda going back and forth let's see what else we've got we've got ooh that one's kinda cool 
Okay, so let's double click on it. Puts it into the source window. All right, so I'm just going to close this because this is now in the way. And now this is in the source window. Same thing here. I'm going to try to find an in and an out point. And I'll just scroll back and forth. There you go, right there. I'm going to type the letter I once, and then I'm just going to let it run for just a little bit. And then I'm going to go O for out. Okay, now I'm going to go right into this picture and pull by holding down the mouse and letting go right here. If I happen to let go too far away and I leave a space in the middle, I'm just going to click once and it'll turn like that and I hit delete. Click once here, hit the delete button and now it'll all go in together. Okay, now this is all longer and I can't see uh, the end. So I'll do the minus button. So remember plus and minus. Or if you want to see the whole thing, backward slash. Now this right here will preview into the right window. So we're going to go like this and we're just going to go okay so you can see that it basically goes straight there with no dissolve. I want some effects. Let's go to the effects window and if the effects window isn't here, just go up to window and pull down to effects. But we'll go to the effects window and there's a shebang of effects in here. I just want to do the ones that I know that are really easy and that's cross dissolve. So I'm just going to type the letter CR and it will show you like crop and crop cross dissolve. Let's pull this guy right into here. I'm going to hang on and drag and then I'm going to drop it so that it'll tell you we're going to dissolve between these two frames. That's kind of cool. Same thing here. I'll do the same thing. Pull it down in here. And now we've dissolved between the two frames. Now watch what happens. I'll hit the space bar. And then now we have this. Okay, got it? Now, I don't want this music. I don't like the audio. And it's got a lot of wind and everything like that. So I'm just going to drag and highlight these two guys right here. Got it? I'm going to right click or... Uh, command click on here until I get this thing right here which is a pop-up window and I'm going to go unlink. That means that I can delete the sound file and I know it's sound because right here it says A1 track 1. A1 uh, I'm just gonna go like that highlight them both or one at a time and hit delete. Now they're gone. Now I have no sound. No sound whatsoever. But I've got a pretty cool little clip going on here. This one I'm not wild about it being way back like that. I'm going to double click on it and I'll just pull the handles back until it fills the frame. There you go. Alright, now let's add some music. And when I go to look for my music, I'm going to go into the media browser. Think of the media browser as your finder. And I know that I have got all my music files down here in uh, this drive right here. So I'm just, and, and you'll want to know where you, you uh, picked all these things, okay? So now that I'm in here, I'm just going to try to find my sounds and music. And I've got um, uh, this music file right here. Again, did you see how I had to go looking around for it? Boy, if you move this file, this thing will break. You'll never be able to get everything all corralled together because uh, Adobe Premiere just basically uses um, what they call proxy files and it's got to find it in the finder so rather than trying to f corral all of them and make sure that everything's in the same place save yourself a whole ton of time and then right click or option click on this and then go import once you import it into your project it'll pop up here and you don't have to go look for it anymore this is a huge time saver so now I've got the sound here rather than double clicking it which I could do and pop it into the window I can actually drag it right into the bottom here just like that. Okay, got it? And I'm gonna let go. Now I've got music behind my video. So how's that? Okay. Now it's gonna end. I'm gonna hit the C button. C is for cut. See how it turned into razor blade? And I'm just gonna go right here and click once. And then that's it. I want to get rid of this. I'm going to press the V button. I think V is just for regular uh, editing. And I'm going to drag over or just click on it and hit the delete button. Now it's gone. So what I have now is a little tiny film 
that's going to end. It's going to end abruptly, and I don't want the sound to end abruptly, and I certainly don't want the video to end abruptly. I'm going to go back here to Effects. I'm going to choose Cross Dissolve and put it on the end so that it cross dissolves into black. How do I fade out sound? Sound is in an audio transition, and the one I like to use is called Power uh, something. Power, Constant Power. It's under crossfade under audio transitions. I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to pull it into that right there. And now what I have is I'm just going to click up here once and, and here's my output window. I'm going to hit the space bar to play and it tails off. So here it is from the beginning. Still image, then it goes into a video image with a cross dissolve, another video image with a cross dissolve, and then it simply ends. To make more complex videos, all you need to do is just keep repeating this process. I hope this helps.